Hi, welcome to Derek Does. Today, we're gonna do this. Hi, welcome back to Derek Does. Uh, if you're new here, please subscribe. I think you're gonna see some lots of stuff that I do that you might like. But today we're gonna go back to uh, World War II jacket, something that I haven't shown you yet, and it's this jacket in particular. This is a, what they would call a wool overcoat, uh, this one's actually, it's officially called a 32 ounce uh, roll collar uh, coat. Uh, this one is World War II. Uh, this one, as you can see, this is the classic issued uh, to the uh, infantry and that sort of thing. Uh, really not an officer's coat, but for the infantry. This, If you ever see pictures of the Battle of the Bulge, you would see uh, soldiers, US soldiers wearing this coat. Uh, it's a really heavy wool, what they used to, what the people used to have heavy wool coats for, you know, when it was really cold. Today, things have changed with synthetics and that sort of thing. But back uh, in the day, this was it. Uh, again, this is a World War II model. This is from 1945, uh, I think January 6th. So it's right at the beginning of 1945. So it was still in use. And you can see it has the ruptured duck on it. So this was an actual issued and then deissued jacket for World War II. Uh, it's really comfortable, uh, it's warm, uh, it's a great jacket. I'm going to show you all the details on it. Uh, I do know, uh, my son who's a, kind of a historian, I actually bought this jacket for him. I bought it kind of sight unseen, I mean I saw a picture of it, but I saw the ruptured duck so I knew it was World War II uh, and I got it and I didn't even know the size. And it's a 38 and it actually, I'm a 42, but again this are made to go over top of all sorts of things so it actually fits me kind of nicely. Uh, he's more of a 40, so I got it for him, uh, and he has it in his collection of jackets and coats. Uh, but this is the jacket in question. Uh, it's uh, regularly issued. Uh, I know he was telling me that um, soldiers, even though it was very warm, uh, didn't really like it. Uh, and they didn't like it uh, for a couple reasons. One, it was kind of hard to run in because it goes all the way down past your knees. And when you have all your gear and everything on there, it makes it difficult to run and it's heavy. Uh, also, they didn't like wearing it because people would, uh, especially Americans, would shoot at some of the uh, other guys wearing this thinking that they were Germans because Germans also wore a heavy wool coat like this. Uh, later, uh, Americans would wear something uh, like some of the jackets I've shown you from my previous videos uh, that they would wear that were more of like an alpaca lined uh, cotton uh, that looks more U.S. I guess uh, you might say this is kind of a throwback I would say from jackets from and coats from you know World War One and before that they would wear like this. Obviously the Navy had the pea coat which was a shortened version uh, and it was dark or dark gray, uh, navy uh, color wise uh, and it was a little different but it was the same type of jacket of the heavy wool Melton and then um, had buttons uh, that you could go through. But I'll show you the details on this one. This one's really nice, uh, really great shape. Obviously it didn't get worn that much because it is a heavy wool jacket, so it would have only been worn during the winter time as opposed to like an M41 or an M43, which would have been worn pretty much year round with everything on top of it. And I have previous videos on that too. But I haven't shown this one yet, so I thought you might enjoy this. It's a jacket you don't see a lot of. Um, not many people wear great coats anymore. Uh, it's just not fashionable, uh, but it may be fashionable now because nobody else wears them. So maybe you're going to see them everywhere soon. Uh, or more of a television character would always wear a big heavy coat like this uh, because they stand out and they look different. So, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw it up on the hanger so you can take some close-ups of the details of this jacket. It's a really nice jacket. And then I'll, before that, I will, uh, I'll button it up and I'll uh, pull out the camera a little bit so you can see how it looks full length. You can see this jacket actually fits me really well. Again, I'm a 40 two uh, and I have longer arms so this is a 38 I, I might be a regular I'll have to double check but it fits me quite well uh, I can move in it quite easily and then you also have hand warmers here hand warmers on the inside uh, is more of a cotton drill on the inside but it is wool on the outside but it's not like lined 
It's just the wool itself from the fabric of the jacket. And then when if it gets cold, you can put up the collar. It's a smart looking jacket. Uh, definitely would be great for a night out, that sort of thing today. Uh, I think the navy pea coat might be a little better because it's not quite as long, a little more manageable uh, if you're going to be putting it um, over a seat or anything like this. This one you're going to need pretty much a coat rack uh, to hold it, but that's what it looks like. So let's put it up on uh, the rack and I'll show you the details. So here's the jacket uh, without me in it. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, basically almost the same fabric you would find in a army blanket. It's that same colored uh, green. Uh, it does have, you know, keyholes uh, button down here. These are the actual buttons and you can see it's just regular army. Uh, it's not for an officer. This is just uh, regularly issued uh, overcoat for very cold weather. Uh, this is the ruptured duck that I was telling you of. I don't know if you're familiar with that term. But basically it's an eagle with a, uh, in a circle of gold and they would put this uh, symbol on uniforms and that sort of thing. They, the nickname was ruptured duck uh, because you're done. And uh, this is a great way to see if an item is an original World War II or this on Korea, only World War II. Uh, so it's a double breasted. You can see there's buttons on that side too. Uh, and on the inside it's lined with a, a nice cotton drill that's smooth and silky feeling. There's no storm cuffs on this type of jacket. Uh, and then you have the collar which can roll up. This is a 38 regular. So uh, the sleeve length is quite nice on it uh, for even a guy like me with longer arms. Um, here you can see it has uh, no lining really uh, except for cotton there on the inside and then the outside is just the one layer of material, which is this uh, for the uh, for the hand warmer pockets. But it does have hand, war war hand warmer pockets, uh, as you can see there. Nice over flaps that you can then button up because there are a uh, button up there that you can uh, end up here also, depending on your left or right that you can put up and button up. Has the pieces for uh, rank if you needed it or for straps and on the back it's just your classic overcoat that I mean they make these things today that look very similar uh, you have a belted back that you could tighten up if need be uh, although I mostly it was just for decoration I think uh, and then it was it's also for movement uh, as you can see it's it's kind of folded kind of like a by swing uh, that gives you a little bit more room there but also keeps the weather from coming up uh, blowing into your chest. It's kind of like a belt in a way, I guess. Uh, it's split back here for ease of movement. And then you also have buttons here that you can button it up if you don't want that movement with the leg. And if it's like super cold, you have these little buttons here that you can then button up and then it becomes a solid jacket. But most guys would probably leave that open so that they can walk easier. Otherwise, it's like a, a thick wool dress you have to wear. Uh, and you don't have that movement in the legs, especially if you need to run or crouch real fast. I mean, a lot of movement would be needed in this type of jacket. Coat, I'm sorry. Now the inside, you can see the person did sweat a little bit, uh, but it is cotton lined. You can see this is an actual real jacket. It's not a reproduction. Uh, there you can see on the inside, uh, it has a cotton drill. And then you also have these little things here, which um, I'm not sure. Oh, I guess right there, there's a little button there. So you can actually unbutton that and then button into that, I guess. I'm not positive. Uh, if you know, let me know. I, I don't really wear this jacket, so I don't know. Uh, but again, these are the pockets that were sh shown before and then you also have a through pocket if you need to um, here if you unbutton it 
then like coveralls where you can actually come uh, if you unbutton that you can come your hand can come through this area and come on the inside to grab something perhaps that's underneath the jacket uh, that you can't get to and you, if you don't want to unbutton the jacket or you're already strapped up with everything you're allowed to do that and this is the same side I mean the opposite side with the same button and everything like that it's not really lined with anything it's just the wool and you can see it's a pretty thick wool particularly on this side you can see it's pretty thick it's a 32 ounce as they say I'll show you the uh, I'll take it down and I'll show you the actual uh, quartermaster tag now so if you're ever looking for the quartermaster tag it's not in the pocket where you would think it would be uh, most uh, World War II at least U.S., uh, they would have a quartermaster tag usually in the pocket or obviously uh, sewn to it. But this one is actually sewn underneath it, which actually makes it nice because it doesn't uh, get worn away from wear. So this tag is kind of interesting. Uh, here you can see it's overcoat wool Belton uh, OD with a roll collar, 32 ounce from the Ohio Overcoat Company. So an actual overcoat company did make this and not some weird company that just made overcoats because it was during the war and that's what they did uh you can see it's a 38 regular and it was stamped uh january 6 1945 but it was actually made or at least the stamp or the uh, tag was you can see 1944 december something i can't quite make it out obviously it was supposed to be this date but uh for some reason uh maybe there's a delay something happened uh, and so they had to re-stamp them uh, january 6 1945 so they were a month late in getting these jackets or coats out uh, but uh, it's kind of an interesting little things like that are kind of fun to see and give you a little insight into how things all operated back then well i hope you enjoyed this episode on kind of a lesser known but everyone knew of it but nobody really talks about the uh, classic world war ii u.s overcoat and this is it uh it's kind of a neat jacket coat i keep saying jacket but it's a coat uh that um you may want in your collection i mean you can still find these pretty inexpensive uh it's probably harder to find uh nice ones uh because a lot of a lot of the guys who grew, lived a lot of i would assume most of the soldiers from the north and the west uh, where it does get cold would have brought these jackets back to like the farms or the ranches or wherever they lived and just worn them and then probably worn them out uh, because they needed a, a nice warm jacket and or coat and this would be fit the bill really well so they could have brought these back worn them you just don't see them that often uh, you really have to look for them but when you do find one uh, you should get it and just make sure it doesn't smell that bad uh, this one smells fine uh, if you know uh, World War II jackets, sometimes there's issues with uh, smells. And being all wool, uh, particularly if it's in an area where there's a lot of moths, you're going to have damage on that. So it may be kind of a rare jacket or coat to really find in nice shape, uh, unless you find one in the West Coast where they don't really have the moths and they don't have um, the crazy all the stuff that destroys jacket like the mildew and everything like on the east coast uh, but anyway i hope you enjoy this uh, again please subscribe if you haven't yet uh, i think you're gonna like it i always try to get some cool stuff coming out here with a multiple of uh, things uh, but it's stuff that i'm into and i know a lot of guys are also into it so at least gives you an idea of what to look for how to spot a real one and, and uh, even if it doesn't have the ruptured duck or is missing its tag you would go oh well i know what that button you know that's a U.S. button, and it, it oh, I can tell, you know, it's it's what it is. Because I think the jackets were made, uh, or these coats uh, were made, I think they'd start in 41 maybe, probably right at the beginning. And they, I think they went into Korea also. They probably improved them too. And, of course, the uh, M51 uh, uh, then would have kind of replaced this, especially with the, the liner. It's just a better jacket for combat because you can move around and much better than this. Uh, this is, again, I think kind of a throwback bygone days of militariness uh, that they still used in World War II. And also, guys didn't want to get a shot thinking that they were Germans. So uh, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you on the next Derek Does.